Hi everyone, this is Heather from Maxon UK again and today we will be doing the second part of a six part series which is going to give you an understanding of some different MoGraph effects that you can achieve with this great tool set and hopefully give you a bit more confidence to experiment yourself as well. In this tutorial we will be looking at recreating this part of the animation. So for this I'm going to use the fracture object, the plane effector and the delay effector as well. The fracture object is really handy as it will see all child objects as kind of clones that can be affected by any effector. So you don't actually need to make object copies like you would with the cloner. You would just make the objects that you want to be affected a child of the fracture object. So the first thing that we need to do then is make the objects that are going to become children of the fracture. Um, let's jump into cinema and get a disc from the primitive object menu. Then in the attribute manager for the disc, um, increase the outer radius to 150 um, and reduce the disc segments to one and the rotation segments to 60. So we get a nice smooth edge and remove any unnecessary subdivisions. So this disc now needs to be separated into four separate objects. We need to make the, de the disc editable so we can cut it up. To make an object editable in cinema, you can do it one of two ways. Um, you can either use the make editable icon up here or you can hit C on the keyboard as well. The easiest and most accurate way to make knife cuts is to probably jump into the top view, then down the left hand side of the screen find and select the point mode. Once we've done this we can now right click anywhere in the free space in the viewport and this will bring up a context menu which gives you all the tools available for the object and the mode that you have selected. So in there we should be able to find and select the knife tool. Now, if we count five points left from that top point, you'll see if I hover over the points it goes white. This means that the knife cut will start here. So click and hold um, down and drag down to the bottom and find the point directly below it. Once you're happy with the line you can release a click and hopefully this has made a knife cut for you like it has done on mine. So we need to do the same on the right hand side as well and that has created our segments. Even though we have cut the disc in the viewport you can see that in the object manager the disc is still seen as one object. So what we need to do is separate it in the object manager as well so that the effectors we use know that they are to be affected separately. To do that we need to change the mode first so select polygon mode from the left hand toolbar and then along the top select the rectangle selection tool. Click and drag over the first segment's polygons and we should see them turn orange. Using the right click menu again, find and select the split tool. Once you've clicked on it, it will automatically work on the polygons you selected. Now we can see in the object manager we now have two discs, which is exactly what we want. The bottom disc will be the polygons that we've just separated. So we can rename that to one and then go back to the original disc and repeat the process on the second segment. like so and then we can rename that to two and then the third and last but not least the fourth then you can just delete the original disc altogether Now that's done, we can give the segments some thickness. So select all of the polys on all of the segments. Um, the shortcut for that is Control A. This would actually be better if we jump in the into the perspective view, so I'm gonna do that quickly. Now, to give the segments thickness, we can use a tool from the right-click menu again called the Extrude tool. So find and select that, 
then we can take a look at the attributes for it. The offset we can set to 10 centimeters, so the segments are going to be 10 centimeters thick. Once that has been changed, we can simply click apply and it's as easy as that. Now, before we move on, I'm just going to click on the life selection tool along the top to kind of deactivate the extrude tool as I don't want to accidentally extrude any more polygons. It's important that the axis for the segments are aligned centrally to each of the individual segments. If not, we may find some unwanted results when we apply the MoGraph. It's easy enough to check. You can see if I go to model mode down the left hand side and then select the segments in the object manager that they all actually share the same axis position, which isn't good. Um, so to change it, we need to go to mesh along the top and axis center and then axis center again to bring up this window which i'm just going to move over here you can see that at the top it has action which is currently saying axis two so it's going to move the axis point for us then underneath we can see center so it's asking where we want the axis to go to in our case, we want the axis to be centralised between all of the points on the segment. So we don't need to change anything here in, in that case. Just click Execute. And then just repeat that process for all segments. So select Segment 2, Execute, 3, Execute, 4, Execute. And as you do it, you should see the axis move into the correct position. So now we can just close that window down and you can see that the segments now have their own axis position. So now we can get to the fun MoGraph stuff. First of all, let's get a fracture generator from the MoGraph menu. Then just make all of the segments um, children of the fracture. You can do that in one hit by clicking and dragging over all of the segments to multi-select and then drag the segments on top of the fracture until you see the arrow point down and then you can just release. Let's add the first effector, which is going to be a plane. So the plane is very simple, but very versatile effector that allows you to move, scale or rotate your clones by a certain amount specified in the parameter tab. I know it probably sounds a bit boring, but it is one of my favorite effectors. So make sure that the fracture object is selected before going to the MoGraph menu and then selecting the plane effector. You will see that the segments will move up a certain amount in the viewport, um, 100 centimeters to be precise. This is nothing to worry about and is just down to the default settings in the plane effectors parameter tab. So just as in the animation I, I showed you at the beginning, the cylinders start kind of out of shot and then kind of drop down from above. It might be worth going to the top view again, so just bear with me whilst I do that. So if we switch to the parameter tab, we need to change the position parameter. Set the y-axis to zero, so they, uh, the segments come down to kind of floor level again, and set the axis to 500, so it pushes the um, segments up along the z-axis here. So that's fine, but how do we animate these segments coming down um, kind of in a staggered way as well? Well, we're going to need to use the fall off tab for that. So let's go to the fall off tab and take a look at the options. The first thing we need to do is change the shape of the fall off to linear. If I drag the fall off guide that appears in the viewport, you will see that as soon as it that yellow line passes the original axis point for the disc, it will start to move up. Once the red line hits the original axis point for the disc, the effect will be at its strongest. So um, in between those two lines is the fall off for the, for the effect's strength. So at the moment, the fall off is pointing in the wrong direction altogether. So we need to rotate this um, minus 90 degrees using the rotate and the shift key to get those um, 10 degree increments. You can see now that the segments are moving individually. 
We do have one slight problem, being that the effect is the wrong way round. It's starting in the centre and moves up, rather than starting at the top point and ending up in the centre. We can change this easily in the fall off tab just by ticking the invert tick box. Now we can animate this fall off to get the effect that we want. To do this, go to the coordinate tab of the plane effector. So we're going to animate the fall off along the X axis. So move the plane effector until just before the effect starts, which I think is around minus 215. Um, so I'm just gonna type that in just because I'm slightly um, anal about things like that. Then make sure that your time slider is set to zero before recording a keyframe by clicking on that red dot. Now move the time slider forward to frame 30 and then move that plane forward to roughly 115 or so that all the segments are now in the center and have come to rest. Then again record another keyframe. So that should be the first plane in position and animated. You can rename the effects in the object manager just like you can with anything else, just by double clicking on the name in the object manager. I'm going to rename this to plane one. The reason I'm doing this is because you're able to add more than one of the same effect onto a generator. And in this case, this is exactly what I need to do in order for the segments to drop out of the scene again. So again, with the fractures selected, add another plane effector. We can rename this straight away to plane two. We have the same problem that we did before with the segments moving up on the Y axis. So as before, go to the parameter tab of plane two and that set that position Y to zero. And at the same time, set the position Z to minus 500. So as you can probably see, this will now cause conflict between the two effectors. This is because we have not set the fall off for the second plane yet. So it's set to infinite, which means it's going to affect all of the children, no matter where that effector is. So again, just like we did before, we need to go to the fall off tab and set the shape to linear. And then again, I'm just gonna rotate minus 90 degrees around that green axis band. We want this plane effector to have the same movements as the first plane, just 30 frames ahead. A nice easy way to do this is by copying and pasting the keyframes, just like you would in a Word document. To do this, first of all, we need to go to plane one and then select the coordinates tab, which is where we recorded the keyframes originally. Okay, so, we can see that the position X is the one that we recorded, so I'm going to right click on position X and a menu will appear. Then we can go to animation, which is where we will find copy track. So click on that, nothing will happen, but it has copied the keyframes for us. So now I can go to plane two, and again in the coordinate tab, find the position X, then go to right click, animation and then paste track. You should now see the keyframes have appeared in the timeline, which is what we want. Now we just need to move them forward. It's nice and easy to move keyframes around once they've been set. You can either just click and drag to move them individually, or you can click and drag near the bottom of the timeline to multi-select. If you choose to do it this way, make sure that a lighter grey line appears. Once you've selected both keyframes, you can then click and drag anywhere in the lighter grey area to move them across. So in our case, we need to move them forward so that the first keyframe is at frame 30, like so. Now, if you press play, you should see something like this. At the moment, the movement could do with a little bit more interest, so we're going to add one more effector. The delay effector is very handy and ensures that the movement created by other effectors is not too abrupt. Um, it does this by adding a kind of temporal delay on the position scale 
and rotation of the animated clones, making the animation look smoother and maybe more realistic. So add a delay effector, again remembering to select the fracture object first. Then if you press play, you should see a subtle difference. You can turn on and off any of the effectors at any time by clicking on the green tick next to the effector name in the object manager. This will allow you to see exactly what each effector is doing. The effect is really subtle at the minute. If we select the delay effector to bring up the attributes manager, in the effector and parameter tab options, they're, they're both quite limited. We have a strength that you can increase for a stronger result and also a mode which by default is set to blend which um, blends the clones quickly and then slows them down. Even gives you an even speed throughout the movement and spring is my favourite giving a bouncy springy effect. I think a strength of 55 is about right for this animation. Um, just so you know, in the parameter tab, you will just see a tick box for position, scale and rotation. So if all three are animated using different effectors, you can turn off the effect of the delay on any of the parameters. So you, you don't need to have the delay on the rotation. You can just have it on the scale and the position if you wanted. So the last thing to do is to put material onto the segments and probably the easiest way to do this seeing as the amount of um, objects is so small is by creating four separate materials to place on them um, rather than onto the fracture. So first double click anywhere in the free space to create a material then double click on the material um, that appears to bring up the editor and then make sure you're in the colour channel before sliding the RGB sliders to create a colour of your choice. Once you're happy, close the editor down and drag the material from the material manager onto one of the segments and then just repeat the process for the other three segments. Okay, so now if I go back to the perspective view and jump into the camera that I set earlier, I'm just going to quickly make a preview for you to see. So hopefully yours will end up something similar to this one that should appear. Okay, so now we should see a nice, simple and fun MoGraph effect. So that's it for this tutorial. Um, in the next tutorial, we'll be taking a look at effect number three. So keep your eyes peeled and I'll see you in the next tutorial.